Let's count down the top 10 heaviest Webers in the tarantula hobby. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today we're gonna to be talking about the top 10 heavy webbers here in the Tarantula hobby. Now, I've been getting a lot of requests to cover this video, so if there is a topic you would like to see me count down in an upcoming top 10 video, make sure you leave that suggestion down below in the comments. But before we get started, I wanna take a moment and thank today's sponsor. Every now and then, a company will reach out to me and say they wanna sponsor a video, just kinda of help support the channel. A lot of times, I have no idea who they are, and they're trying to push some app or some program that has nothing to do with the hobby, so I just ignore them. But this week's sponsor is somebody that I actually know and have used before in the past and is an awesome dealer here in the US. So today's sponsor is Micro Wilderness. He sells tarantulas and other inverts as well as some reptiles. Located here in the US, he's based in California, so sorry to the international viewers, you're not going to be able to order from him. But in addition to sponsoring today's video, he's actually hooking you all up with a discount. So if you're in the US and you want to try them out, just use this code right here and you'll get 10% off your order. Now I've received a package from him uh, not too long ago. I will link that video at the end of this video if you want to check it out. He sent me some very cool red tarantulas and he's going to be getting an import in very soon from Mexico, so make sure you check him out. You'll find his website link to the top of the description and I'll pin it in the comment section as well. So let's get counting down. So number 10 on the list is a New World Terrestrial Tarantula that comes from Mexico and Guatemala. I actually covered this species before in one of the first episodes of Tarantula Tuesday. They're a gorgeous black and red specimen with an amazing tiger stripe pattern on its abdomen. That probably just gave it away. But in my experience, they web their enclosure up quite a bit. So the number 10 species is the Davis Pentaloris or the Guatemalan Tiger Rump. So number nine is an old world fossorial tarantula that's really popular in the hobby, uh, mainly because it's such a great beginner species when you're getting your first old world tarantula. That, and it has this awesome horn on the top of its carapace. This species hails from Southern Africa, mainly Botswana and Lesotho. They are fossorial, which means they do burrow deep into the substrate, but every specimen I have has webbed up all around its burrow. It's very intricate, very beautiful, and that's why it's number nine on this list. Now number eight is probably one of my all time favorite species. I've featured it a lot on the channel recently, so you've probably seen some of its impressive webbing. This is a new world dwarf tarantula from Brazil and is among one of the most colorful tarantulas in the hobby. Of course, I'm talking about the Dolicotheli diamantinensis or the Brazilian blue dwarf beauty. Now number seven is also a New World Tarantula, but this one is arboreal. It's endemic to Antilles and Martinique and is one of the most recognizable tarantulas in the hobby. They're known for webbing up extensive funnels all along the top of the enclosure. And they'll spend a lot of time hanging out in these tunnels until it's time to eat. But if you're looking for a good heavy webbing arboreal tarantula, you can't do any better than the Carabina Versicolor or the Antilles Pink Toe Tarantula.
Now number six is an old world baboon tarantula that's very popular in the hobby. It's one of the few tarantula species you can actually keep communally. And this tarantula is from the secluded island of Socotra. Of course, this blue and white beauty is none other than the Monocentrophus balfouri or the Socotra Island blue baboon. Now kicking off the top five is a new world tarantula you'll find in Venezuela, as well as Trinidad and Tobago. Now this species doesn't get very large. In fact, it made the list in my top 10 dwarf tarantulas. But this thing will cover its entire enclosure and web. There'll be tunnels going everywhere. So number five is the Neo Holothel Ensi or the Trinidad Olive Tarantula. Now this next tarantula is notorious in the hobby. It has many common names and probably just as many nicknames. This is an old world baboon species that can be found across central, eastern, and southern Africa. I like to keep this species in a semi-arboreal setup because they do like to burrow down, but if you give them some anchor points, they will web up the entire enclosure. So number four is the Tetranoculus morenus or the orange baboon tarantula. Now number three on this list really doesn't need an introduction. I'll just say it's my favorite tarantula. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you already know what species we're talking about. But this is a semi-arboreal species from Venezuela. And the cool thing about it is it's the only species in its genus. Even as a spiderling and juvenile, this species does some extensive webbing. They're not the largest tarantula out there, but I keep mine in a 10 gallon aquarium, mainly to give it plenty of room to web. And it never disappoints. So the number three tarantula on on this list is the Chromatopelma cyanopubescence or the green bottle blue tarantula. Now for the number two, I struggled a lot about which species I really wanted to pick. And I narrowed it down to two species in the same genus. Now this is an old world tarantula that's named after the location in which it's found. 
It's a close relative to the Harpectera pulchripes, which you already know is a favorite of mine, and is definitely a heavy weber. So they both kind of fit into this slot, but I'm gonna give number two to this species because the other one has made all kinds of lists, and I think this one might actually web up its enclosure a little bit more. So number two is the Harpectera baviana, and there's really no common name for it, so we'll just call it the Harpectera baviana. Now, if you want some inside information or just see some behind the scenes footage, you should join my Patreon community or become a member here on YouTube. Just hit that join button down below this video. If you become a member of either of those two, you get access to some exclusive videos, photos, and there's just all kinds of other perks. So if you wanna help support the channel, feel free to join me on either of those two platforms. So the number one heaviest webbing tarantula, at least here in my collection, is a species that I really haven't shown much love to on my channel so far. In fact, I don't think I've made any videos that feature this species, but I've got a lot of tarantulas that come from this genus, and the truth is they all web up their enclosures a whole lot. But this one in particular is a fossorial species that hails from India. I don't get to see it a whole lot, but when it does come out, it is a beautiful specimen. But even though I I don't get to see the actual spider, it covers its entire enclosure with webbing. Now, some people keep their specimens on just a little bit of substrate. They don't really give them much room to burrow. In those instances, they web up their enclosure even more, but I don't suggest you do that. They like to burrow, so you gotta give them plenty of substrate. So the number one heaviest webbing tarantula in my collection is the Chilobrachis fimbriatus, or the Indian violet tarantula. Now make sure you head over to Micro Wilderness and check out his selection, and don't forget to use that discount code to get 10% off your order. I appreciate you watching this video. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs> no, we not the same, what you talking about? Got me all up in your mentions, must have heard around. How that sound, yeah, that sound good. Tell them